Uh, and this is actually a good saying that always stuck with me from a continuing legal education course. You know what? There's a 100% tax on an irresponsible beneficiary. That just means they're going to blow the money. Potential steps in trust funding. Okay, uh, you will, the main one is changing the ownership to the trust. All right, the trust is now the direct owner. Uh, and sometimes this has a little anxiety for my clients. Wait a minute, I'm, you mean it's not really my bank account anymore? No, no, no. If you or you or your spouse or your partner, whoever is putting this together, whether it's one or two people, you're the trust or setting up the trust, you're the trustees, you're the beneficiaries, it's still 100% control, but it's titled in the name of the trust and that's enough to keep it out of probate. Great. So when you're changing the ownership over to the trust, typically they're re they're renaming the existing account, but in the case of banks, they've got to do things a little bit differently for bank accounts. They have to open a new account in the name of the trust and move the money because of account numbers. And it's, it's something dealing, I believe it's with the Patriot Act and a couple of other things just to keep things straight. All right, um, here's where I've had some discussions uh, and there's a little bit of a disconnect uh, when it comes to things like beneficiary designations. Sometimes I have uh, the professionals and usually it's banks or sometimes it's newer uh, financial advisors. Oh, you don't need to put this account into the name of the trust. Our accounts are beneficiary driven. All right, that sounds nice. It sounds like you don't have to do much. What this really comes down to with a lot of the financial institutions, they're just saying it's a, it's a lot more paperwork for them to change the ownership than it is to change the pay on death beneficiary. So they may push towards that or say, oh, you don't have to worry about doing a revocable trust or you don't have to worry about this going into the trust we can set up your beneficiaries directly. All right, so here's what could happen. Um, if you have, well, okay, don't put this into the trust. You can just name your two kids as the beneficiaries on this account. Well, they're the beneficiaries of the trust, right? Yeah, well, you can just name it to them directly. It doesn't have to go through the trust. What if one of the kids dies before you do? Oh, well, we can put persterpes on there. So if something happens to one of the kids, it's gonna, you want it to go to their kids, right? Yeah. Well, their kids are seven and nine. Okay, so these you've got $600,000 in an account. It's supposed to go 300,000, 300,000. One kid dies and it's gonna go down to their two kids. Well, it's going to the kid, the grandkids, right? At what age? Well, I put in my trust, they don't get it till 40. It's not going into the trust. Now those kids are getting that money at 18 or 21. No, 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 no. You want those age restrictions. You want the trustee to stand in between them and the money and make, help them make smart decisions, pay for things until they turn the age that you put into the trust or the trustee decides to release the money early. You don't want this to just go to them, be, you know, to, just to avoid probate. You want the control, you want the restrictions, you wanna make sure all these different contingencies, that can't be put easily or at all into a beneficiary designation to be the end all and be all. Okay, another potential step in trust funding for an account is, well, you could make the trust the transfer upon death beneficiary. This isn't for all assets. Uh, and it really is because we've had some 
uh, and it's a more recent thing, that if you're naming a pay on death beneficiary, such as a trust, and it seems to be the bigger the institution, the bigger this problem is, oh, yeah, okay, well, the, the, you have a pay on death designation, a pay on death beneficiary named, oh, you could name it the trust or you could name it a person. Don't worry, it avoids probate. Uh, okay, so the person dies. Yeah, here, I'm the trustee. I'm trying to collect these funds. Okay, well, we need a death certificate. Uh, we need you to fill out this form. We need ID. We need a page in the trust showing that you're the uh, successor trustee. And we need the letters testamentary from the probate court. And we, whoa, wait a minute. Letters testamentary from the probate court? What are you talking about? This is supposed to avoid probate. Oh, well, we just need the paperwork. It's not really avoiding probate, is it? Now, you talk to the personnel at the financial institution. You talk to probate attorneys. You talk to the, even the clerks at the probate court. Oh, it's not in probate, but the f second you're having to deal with the probate court to get documentation in order to get something that was supposed to avoid probate to the clients, to the family, that sounds like probate to me. So making the trust the transfer upon death beneficiary rather than the owner, there's usually got to be some overriding reason, something that's making things a lot more frustrating. Uh, this is just to give you the inside scoop on this. Typically, we want bank accounts to be titled in the name of the trust. They don't just change the ownership. They open a new account, which means new account numbers. So if we have clients, they've got maybe six accounts at the bank, but one of them is the main checking account they use. That's where uh, their paychecks are, or their retirement funds are deposited. That's where Social Security is deposited. They've got all their bills and utilities automatically getting paid out of that account. Well, if they move that in and start another account, well, they got to redo those direct deposits. They got to redo all that bill pay. Oh, that's a big frustration. Well, typically, it's not like they're keeping tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in that account. It's their monthly operating account. There shouldn't be a big balance in that anyway. We want the other five accounts to be titled in the name of the trust, even if they want to have uh, that one account be payable upon death into the trust. So again, the majority of the money is going in. That's a convenience thing. Uh, name the trust as the contingent beneficiary. All right, this is another trust funding strategy. This is typically for things like IRAs or 401ks. You do not put IRAs and 401ks into the name of the trust. And if we have spouses who are putting together the trust, there's a really good tax reason to name the spouse as the primary beneficiary, but then we could be naming the trust as the contingent beneficiary. For the spouse, they can simply do a rollover. If the trust is the pay on death beneficiary, well then, okay, we've got some potential income tax advantages that we're giving up, but we're doing it consciously when we talk with our clients. Usually this is where maybe it's not high hundreds of thousands of dollars in retirement accounts that would be getting a tax advantage. Maybe it's 100,000 and it could be spread out over three younger kids. What becomes more important are the age limits and the control and having the trustee be able to handle it and use that money. And they're willing to sacrifice a little bit on the tax advantage end. It's like, okay, yeah, there's gonna be more taxes. Uh, and this is actually a good saying that always stuck with me from a continuing legal education course. Uh, the instructor or attorney said, you know what? There's a 100% tax on an irresponsible beneficiary. That just means they're going to blow the money. So you might as well pay a little bit extra in the taxes if it's going to go into the trust and just be managed there and protected. So the rest of it's protected. Uh, so I did have, uh, it was a younger, newer advisor. And I 
think the, the they had one of the more experienced advisors on this conference call and they just wanted to know, well, why did you have this married couple client name the trust as the contingent beneficiary? There are all these tax advantages to naming the benefit, the kids as the beneficiaries directly. And they asked the question, but I could almost kind of tell that the younger agent, uh, the younger advisor was like, you don't do that because you don't get the tax advantages. Well, and I don't remember the exact ages. Well, the, the kids are 9, 13, and 15, and the parents want it restricted until age 40. So, yeah, they don't, they don't want the kids to get it directly to have a what could end up being a minimal tax advantage that they probably wouldn't take advantage of anyway because they just take the money and spend it. So he ended up getting the, the idea after that. It's like, okay, yes, taxes aren't everything. They have to get balanced against the control and wanting the trustee and the age limits and all the other contingencies. Uh, so that tunnel vision, I think, quickly disappeared. It's like, all right, there are much more important things that may be there for the clients. It's not just taxes. Okay, wild cards and exception these things abound. The biggest example, what if it's a 529 plan? And the 529 plan just happens to be in a money market account. All right. The 529 plan isn't owned by you. It's actually owned by the potentially minor beneficiary. But it's not really theirs because you're the custodian. Well, you can't transfer that into the trust because it's not yours. And if you did, all the tax growth advantages would be gone. So that's a situation where the best thing you could probably do is just name successor custodians to line up with your trustee list. And it kind of does as much of the same thing as it can. 